along with parser policies and acceptable use policies, backup policies are another key aspect to managing security within organizations. So a backup is, as I would imagine you would know anyway, is a copy of data which you make in case something happens to your original, right? And as a security perspective, backup does not prevent an attack happening, but it makes things a lot easier once an attack's happened, it reduces the impact of attacks, in other words, which is why it has quite a big effect on security. Plus, it's generally people make mistakes and lose stuff. Backups are always a good idea anyway. So you have your storage device, maybe a hard drive, you have a file on it, which is important, let's say, and to back up, you are going to put a copy of it somewhere else. So maybe on another hard drive, maybe in the cloud. So backing up is the process of you copying your original and putting it somewhere else, somewhere hopefully separate. The idea being, of course, that if something happens to your original, you can get the copy back. And you can see here, I've got data v2.xls. So maybe I've made a slight change to my original data.xls file. So a small change, but let's say somehow it gets lost. Maybe I do something stupid and I delete it and then can't recover it. Maybe I get attacked and it gets deleted. Maybe it gets locked with a ransomware attack. Whatever it is, I can then go to my backup and restore from that backup. So restoration is getting that file back. Now, of course, unless you've updated the backup since you last made a copy of it, you're only getting the latest one you backed up. So I wouldn't get my data version 2 do XLS unless I had copied that to the cloud storage as well. A backup policy can certainly help tighten up that process. Right, if I'm not backing up enough, it can really reduce the benefit of having it. So a backup policy will typically do the following and include the following details. So it will kind of determine what is being backed up because it's not always possible to back up all data. On an individual basis, perhaps it is feasible, but actually for a whole company, you might have petabytes worth of data. You actually can't feasibly back up every single thing. It would just take far too long. And so often a policy will outline priorities, what is really important, what needs to get backed up because it's so essential to what we are doing. There might be some data which is not really worth your time to back it up because it's just easily replicated or is not used very much. And I mentioned speed, it can be quite slow backing up data. And so the media you choose will have an impact on that as well. So the media is the storage device. So storage media is another word for our storage device. So what storage are you going to put the backup on? That's a really key determination because it does affect performance as well as other factors. So you could put it on a CD. That's how companies used to do it often, not so much anymore. You might go to a cloud provider and sort of let them do it but obviously that has negatives as well. USB stick might be fine for small data, but clearly not enough for a whole company perhaps. Or use a hard drive, which is probably the most common, but actually it's really important and it should be defined in the policy that you keep any backups totally separate from your original. Ideally, your backups should be kept somewhere completely different. So not even in the same building or the same vicinity, maybe a different even city or different country in some cases, right? The idea being that if say you decide to store a backup, I use that word loosely, on the same hard drive, like you just rename it to version two. Clearly, if something happens to your hard drive, it fails or you get hacked or there's a ransomware attack, you lose both your original and your backup, which is not helpful at all. Keep it separate in a different part of the country by a different company operating it, just reduces the risk of it being damaged, both your original and the backup. Even if you had, say, a memory stick, in the same building as your hard drive, a fire could damage it, a flood could damage it, a thief could come and steal both. You wanna keep things really separate, ideally. If this isn't outlined in a policy, things don't get done, people forget, people don't do their job properly because there's not any accountability behind this process. So in addition to what has been backed up and where the backup is going, also you should define the schedule. So when you are going to do the backup because as I've said a few couple of times already, it can be a slow process and it can take up a lot of resources. And by resources in this sense, I mean energy, I mean computer power, I mean the network speed. If you are transferring lots of data to a cloud provider, it can slow down your network and that is not ideal. And so you've already decided when you're going to do it. Doing it on a continuous basis may not be feasible because it's too slow and takes up lots of resources. Equally, if you set a clear schedule, it means you won't forget about it. So actually, 
you don't have to do it continuously if you've got a clear schedule and one which can be easily followed by everyone involved. If you don't have a schedule, it can be forgotten about and it means when something happens, you haven't got a latest backup available. So, you know, the actual schedule will depend on the context and you might be asked in an exam to consider some context and decide when a backup would be best to do. So if your company is fairly typical and maybe works Monday to Friday and has the weekend off, I mean, modern companies do work at the weekend usually, especially big ones, of course, but this might be your setup. When are you going to decide to do a backup? Well, assuming it's going to be quite slow, probably you're going to pick the weekend where maybe nobody or fewer people are working. You'll have less drain on resources. And also, changes aren't getting made over the weekend, potentially. And so there's less risk of restoring and it not being up to date. A full backup is where you copy every single thing which is in your scope. So maybe not every single file, but whatever it is you, you think is important. There are other types of backups. So an incremental backup is where you just back up the things which have changed since the last backup. So you might choose to do maybe a couple of incremental backups during the week, maybe after work, so in the evening or early hours of the morning, so it doesn't affect your employees as much. And all they do, incremental backups, is just find changes since the last backup and create a copy of those changes. So these are quicker to do and are more lightweight, but there is a risk they can miss things sometimes. So full backup is generally is best, but you might do it less frequently and you might do an incremental backup almost every day. Maybe not on Friday if you're doing a full backup on Saturday, but that's a choice you'd have to make as a policy maker.